The very first ETF launched in the United States of America was on January 22nd of 1993. Now, amazingly, the CTF is actually still around and it's still very popular. It's called the S&P 500 Trust ETF. If you had invested in this ETF on January 22nd of 1993, guess how much money you would have? You would have had not a 100% return, not a 500% return, not a 1,000% return, but a 1,352% return. So if you had invested $10,000 into that SPY ETF, it would be worth $142,979 today. That is a compound annual growth rate of 9.72%. And think about this for a second. If instead of putting that money into the ETF and you just kept it in your bank account, you may have $15,000 tops right now. I'm saying this because I'm sure if you're watching this video, you're thinking to yourself, should I get started investing in ETFs? And likely you're also thinking about, should I get started just generally investing? And so the answer is yes, you definitely should be. Whether it's ETFs or stocks or real estate, whatever it is, starting to invest is that main thing that you should probably start doing. Now, investing in ETFs, it's up to you, but I think ETFs are a great route to go. And you don't have to hold all your money in ETFs. I have ETFs and I have stocks. You can blend things together. So in this video, we're gonna do a top-down approach to investing in ETFs. We're gonna start off with portfolio construction. So this is kind of like the top of our roof of our house here, and this is what we wanna decide what we're doing. Do we want to create a portfolio with just one ETF? Do you want three different ETFs called a three fund portfolio? Do you want something called a core and satellite portfolio? Do you want something different, a different variation, maybe where you also have stocks and ETFs inside of the same portfolio, maybe bonds as well. And so one of the first things you need to do is decide what you want here. So portfolio construction is gonna be an important part of this. And then the next thing we're gonna talk about is the ETF itself. What should you look for when it comes to ETFs? So we're gonna talk about fees, diversification, the style box, and also returns of ETFs. I'm gonna show you some websites that you can use that are free that can help you out with this. Then we're also gonna talk about brokers and how you can access ETFs by using a broker. So let's talk about portfolio construction. And actually, before we begin, hey, my name's Robbie. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. I make videos on ETFs, the stock market, what's going on in the market, personal finance. I'm an ex-financial advisor. And if you like this channel, please hit the subscribe button and like this video if you end up getting some value out of it. And I really do hope you do. Now, in terms of portfolio construction, we're gonna make this easy. So first off, you can have a one ETF portfolio. In this case, you would wanna go with something that's broadly diversified, that has a lot of different stocks inside of it. And VTI is the ticker symbol of that ETF and is from Vanguard. You're basically gonna get 4,000 plus stocks inside one ETF. So it's very diversified. And you would basically go ahead and buy this ETF, put money into it however often you want to, and it would track the general direction of the entire stock market of the United States. So we'll talk more about VTI in a little bit, but another one you could possibly do is called VOO. VOO is a very diversified ETF as well. It's not as diversified as VTI is with 4,000 something companies in it, but there's 500 companies inside VOO. It's the largest companies that trade on the stock market and it tracks something called the S&P 500 index. So that is one way to do a one fund portfolio. Let's talk about a three fund portfolio. A three fund portfolio can be great. It gives you a lot more diversification than the one I just mentioned because what you're doing is you're gonna also have some international stocks and you're also gonna have exposure to bonds. So a lot of people like three fund portfolios because it gives you even more diversification than even just VTI, which is that total stock market index ETF with 4,000 something companies inside of it. And for those people who maybe are a little less risky and wanna have a little bit more bonds because bonds have less risk than stocks, it allows you to decide if you want more bonds in your portfolio than equities or the mix that you want, essentially. There are different ways to create a three fund portfolio. You don't have to use Vanguard ETFs, but that's the one I'm gonna tell you right now because that's probably the most popular one. So what you would do here is just like I mentioned VTI before, you would have money in VTI. That's gonna be your exposure to the general market in the US. You're gonna also have some money in VXUS, which is a total international ETF, which has exposure to the entire globe, excluding the United States, of course. And then for the bond portion, you could have what's called the BND ETF. Now, the amount of money that you put into, let's say VTI versus VXUS versus BND and the way that that portfolio is constructed, well, in order to figure that out, what you're gonna to wanna to do is, I think is a good idea to take a risk tolerance questionnaire. You could find these online and you're gonna answer some questions and it's gonna tell you how risky you are. Now I'll try to find one and link it in the description below and hopefully that can help you out. But just as an example, let's say you want an 80-20 portfolio. That means that 80% of your portfolio 
would be in equities, and then 20% would be in bonds. Now we know that 20% in bonds would only go into BND because that's the only ETF that is a bond ETF in the three fund portfolio that I just mentioned. So for the remainder, the other 80% left over of your portfolio, you would usually split it between VTI and VXUS. Now VTI will usually get more of a portion than VXUS. So for example, of the 80%, let's say 65% goes into VTI, and then 15% would go into the VXUS International ETF. Of course, you can personalize this to however you think you wanna do it, but that's just an example. Now, another way you can do this and conceptualize this, and I think this is a really great one to understand, is called a core and satellite portfolio. So let's visualize this by using VTI, and let's say you want your core, the core of your core and satellite portfolio to be VTI. So you could be VTI, it could be VOO, whatever it is, it's gonna be a broad ETF that has a lot of stocks inside of it. And it's called the core because it's going to be the largest portion of your portfolio. So what happens here? Well, you take that 60%, you hold that always inside that VTI, let's say, and then you add some satellite positions around it. So for example, SCHD is a dividend type ETF. You could put 10% in that. Triple Q, you could put 10% in there. VGT, you could put 10% in there. VYM, you could put 10% in there. And suddenly now you have this core and satellite portfolio. These are just, of course, random examples of different ETFs you could use. I'm not saying to use these, but these are just potential ETFs that someone would use to create a core and satellite portfolio. Now, of course, you can personalize this. You can do what you want. And so the next part of this video should be able to help you kind of figure out which ETFs you might want to use. Let's go ahead and talk fees. Now, in general, ETFs are a lot less expensive to invest in than mutual funds, but some ETFs are a bit more expensive than others. To show you the difference here, let's take a look at the SPY versus VOO ETFs. I'm on a website called ETFDB.com right now, and as you can see here, the expense ratio of SPY, which tracks the S&P 500 index, is 0.09%. Now, the expense ratio of VOO, which tracks the exact same index, it does the same exact thing as SPY does, it costs 0.03%. Now, looking at the FINRA Fund Analyzer tool, I can see here how much if I invested $10,000 and I grew it at 5% per year over a 10-year period, how much money would I pay in fees to have SPY versus VOO? Because SPY was more money, it's gonna cost me $115 to have money inside SPY. And because VOO is less money and less expensive, it's only $38.61 to have my money there. So in terms of expense ratio, there's no reason, there's no benefit for me to put money right now into SPY when I could put it into VOO and pay less expense. I've made a video on the best websites that you can use that are free to help you analyze ETF. So I'll go ahead, I'll link that down below. So if you wanna watch that video, that's gonna go more in depth into the different websites and tools you can use. Now we talked a little bit about diversification. You don't want all of your money inside one stock because let's face it, sometimes stocks don't do well. A new competitor could emerge, they could have some type of scandal, anything can happen with a single stock and you could use, lose, use, <laughs> you could lose a lot of money. So by having a diversified portfolio, you could have an ETF that invests in different companies. So ETFs will generally give you diversification. Now, there is something I wanna show you that I think really helps people conceptualize understanding the difference between the different ETFs. It's called a style box. I'm on Morningstar.com right now, I typed in SCHD as the ticker symbol, which is the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. This is a five-star ETF by Morningstar. Five-star is the best star rating you can get with the company. And when you go into an ETF and then you click on portfolio, you can go down and see what's called a stock style or a style box. What this does is it visually helps you understand where this stock falls. On the left side, you have large, mid, and small. Those are the sizes of companies. So Apple is a giant company. Apple is a large, and actually probably might even be above large, is a mega cap company. Now on the top, you have value, blend, and growth. So what does this mean? Well, a growth stock is a company that usually is experiencing rapid growth in earnings. Could be growth in revenue. They could be expanding operations quickly. These are growth stocks that they have a lot of potential to grow in value, but a lot of times growth stocks may be a little bit more expensive than let's say value stocks. Value stocks oftentimes, maybe you're a little older companies, companies that pay dividends, companies that have been around a while, and these companies don't have as much growth, but they're still considered good companies because maybe they pay dividends and maybe they're at good prices. Now a blend would be if you have both value and growth inside the same ETF. So what we do is we say, okay, if it's large and it's value, that means it's a large cap value ETF. This shows us visually 
how we could see where most of the holdings inside the CTF fall under. So if you're looking for an ETF that has large companies, but also are value oriented companies, a CHD would potentially fill that box for you. Now, one of the reasons I want to show you this is because each of these boxes can be filled by different ETFs. There could be a large cap value, large cap blend, large cap growth, mid cap value, mid cap blend, mid cap growth. You know what I'm saying here. And also you could have international funds that are international growth funds. So this can get interesting. You can really figure out which ETFs you like and fill a portion of your portfolio if you want to, or you could just buy a general stock market ETF. Like I told you before, VTI or VOO, it's up to you if you want to get into maybe more complicated ETF structure. So if you don't, then don't worry. But if you do, well, you might want to start learning about things like this. I've made a lot of videos on ETFs over the past couple of years, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to flash on the screen right now, some of my picks for the best ETFs in different categories. So you can go ahead and look at that. Maybe that will help you. The next thing I want to talk about is returns. This is one of the favorite parts of a lot of people. This is where you go and you figure out how much ETFs have made over time, and you can compare them. What I'm doing here is I'm going over to the Yahoo Finance page. I've typed in SCHD, the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. That's the one I'm gonna look at here. And so while I'm on this page, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click Chart. And what I'm looking at now is what the return has been for SCHD over the past five years. Now, one thing that you'll wanna probably do is change this to percentages. So if you wanna know how much percent this has gained, you go over here, you click this gear icon, you click percentage, and now it's gonna convert this into a percent. As you can see now, over the past five years, if you had invested in SCHD, you have had a 45.85% return. Now, what I'm sure you're probably gonna to like to do is you're gonna to wanna to compare this to other ETFs. So you go over here, you hit comparison, and let's say we wanna compare SCHD to VOO. I type VOO, and now we can see the light blue line is VOO, and VOO has slightly outperformed SCHD over the past five years. We could change this around if we wanna see what's looked like in two years. We could see that SCHD has actually outperformed VOO over a two year period. So whenever you find ETFs that you're interested in, you can go ahead, you can come here, you can compare them to each other. So this very last part that we're gonna go over in this video is gonna be the brokers, because you need to find a broker to have access to purchase ETFs on the stock market. There's a lot of broker options in the US, so let's talk about a few of them that you might wanna take a look at. So first off, you have Charles Schwab. Now I have a Charles Schwab account, I'm very happy with it, so it's a broker that I like myself personally. Now I'll tell you some interesting things about Schwab and some of the bigger brokers in a sec, but next let's go to Vanguard. Vanguard is a giant broker, one of the biggest in the United States, so you can get a lot of different things with Vanguard, and then Fidelity is another big competitor to Vanguard and Schwab. Fidelity also having a ton of assets under management and one of the biggest brokers, if not the biggest inside the United States. What you're gonna get with these three brokers, these three bigger brokers, is you're gonna get great tools and you're gonna get good research. So for example, there are ETF tools in each of these brokers. I have an ETF tool in my Schwab account that helps me screen for ETFs. So for example, if I wanna find ETFs that have high dividend yields, that pay good dividends, then I can go ahead and go into this different screen and it allows me to screen out different ETFs the way I want. There's also its own comparison tool. So if you have one of these brokers, they likely do all have a comparison tool for ETFs. So there are different things that you can utilize within these brokers, but then there's the smaller brokers. For example, M1 Finance, this is more of an app based broker, but you're gonna be able to buy ETFs with a company like M1 Finance. Robinhood, which all of us I'm sure know about at this point, Robinhood also will allow you to have access to ETFs. Now just remember, Robinhood, M1 Finance, you're not gonna get these tools that you're gonna get with a larger broker. So that's just kind of a downside, but if you don't care about it, then totally fine. You may like the user experience of the app based broker. So people, that is all we have for this video. I hope this helps. I hope you like this video. I hope that you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna start investing in ETFs after this if you have not yet. So if you like this video though, hey, hit the like button and subscribe to see more videos like this one and watch some of my other videos. I have tons of ETF videos. Go ahead, take a look at the library of my videos and you'll find a bunch of stuff there. So thanks again and watch another of my videos on the end screen right now. Thanks everyone so much for watching. I do want to remind you, I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is just my opinion. And let's face it, I am not right 100% of the time. So please do your own due diligence.